Molly, I want to be in gratitude for where and what is truly happening here. Oh, yes, Brandy. I'm about to introduce, um, I'm going back out to the holoportation machine. I'm going to introduce David Nussbaum. Thank you for playing that. Uh, I have started the recording. I'll see you in a moment. I am so excited about our next Trailblazer talker. It is David Nussbaum. He is the CEO, inventor, and just an extraordinary entrepreneur. Uh, the creator of Portal. You saw Tim Draper in the Portal teleportation machine. Now you're going to see the mastermind, the genius, the brilliance behind this epic in uh, invention, which is also called the epic. Uh, David will be uh, sharing his story, telling you all about his background and how this all came to be. The future is now. It's my pleasure to call to the telepresence, David Nussbaum. Yay, David. Woo, welcome. Thank you, Molly. Uh, wow, that was, that was some introduction. I don't know how I can follow Tim Draper. Uh, that was one of the most remarkable speeches I've ever heard. Tim Draper, uh, we would like you to speak for 45 minutes on this single subject. And he spoke uh, effortlessly, brilliantly, uh, not a single um or uh, the guy's a pro. Uh, and that was uh, one of the most, uh, it was like watching Jordan just, just shooting uh, threes. It was crazy. So to follow that is uh, a daunting task. But here I am. Uh, I'm standing as a real person, but also as a portal effect. Uh, we say uh, that this isn't a hologram. It is a portal. A portal is a very similar effect as a hologram, except uh, we have the ability to take any two-dimensional content and beam it with volume and reflection and, uh, and, and create a lifelike projection in real time. I am standing just 10 feet away from one of our portals, but I might as well be 10,000 miles away. I could beam from any one place into any number of locations at the exact same time with the near supernatural ability to hear, see, and fully interact with my global audience. I started Portal two years ago. Uh, before I started Portal, I was running one uh, department of what used to be the world's largest hologram entertainment company. And we were famous for digitally resurrecting the late legends to posthumously perform uh, in sold out cities around the world. So you may have seen some uh, artists, uh, uh, that, that span time and genres and uh, it was really insane to see these these amazing icons of the past materialize on stages uh, sometimes decades after they passed away it, 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 nothing like that had ever been done before I mean sure we've seen uh, music videos and movies and you read books and you can hear records of people that no longer uh, are alive, but to see them standing on a stage, to see them performing with other artists, living artists, that sort of inspired me. It inspired a lot of other folks like me who uh, run uh, hologram or hologram like companies. Um, one of the things that I always wanted to do, though, was not bring back the dead, but it was it was a treat the living uh, in a way that they had never been treated before and that's by beaming their entire full-size uh human 4k resolution version of themselves from one place to another so instead of digitally resurrecting the late i wanted to beam the living uh we call it holoportation and portal is the best in the world at beaming anybody from wherever they are to wherever they need to be the portal itself is a seven foot tall four and a half foot wide, two foot deep, 
teleportation machine. Anybody from wherever they are could be in any portal in real time. It's insane. Uh, but besides just projecting living people, uh, one of the things that we want to really get across is that it is also for pre-recorded content. I'm standing here uh, to honor, uh, I'm honored to be uh, on Molly's panel of speakers for this conference, but uh, we're talking about NFTs today. And uh, this portal doesn't just beam live people, but it can be an NFT uh, projection machine. So why are you spending hundreds of thousands, it's the millions of dollars with these amazing works of art so you could just show them to your friends on, on your phone or on a tablet or on a, or on a flat 2D uh, uh, monitor on your wall? We have something with dimension, depth. Maybe I can, Molly, would it be okay if I maybe showed some of this stuff? All right, so what I'm gonna have Ryan do is uh, change channels. Uh, we're going to go from live to pre-recorded and I'm going to just, I'm going to grab the microphone and, and, uh, and walk around a little bit. Okay, great. All right. Follow me. All right. How am I, how, how can you, can you see me all right? All right. I know we turned the light off, but so you can zoom in or do whatever you need to do. Uh, portal is a cloud-based network. We keep all of our content on the cloud and we have the ability to pull up any piece of content from anywhere we're standing in the world and we could beam it into any portal that we have access to. Each portal uh, has its own serial number and it's like it has its own fingerprint. Everyone uh, is its own individual. Uh, when you select a piece of content, the image or the video pops up, which is remarkable because although I'm standing here, it, it's acting a bit like a remote control. I could be in, uh, in Miami and I could be projecting content, uh, pre-recorded content uh, in Los Angeles. This is our portal logo, uh, but let me show you some NFT stuff. Molly did this great thing on Earth Day a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Nicole Buffett, Warren Buffett's granddaughter, is a bit of an artist. She painted this amazing dolphin uh, work of art that Molly might have commissioned. Is that right? You commissioned this? So here she is. It, 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 it even has an inscription on the back with her signature. These are, these are the kinds of things that should be being presented inside of, uh, inside of portals. This particular portal is seven feet tall, but we're working on tabletop devices. So think of them as like NFT display portals for the future. So that is something that you should definitely uh, be on the lookout uh, in the coming months. Can't go to the museum? You could bring the museum to you we have some of the most famous works of art scanned, made digital and put inside of hologram picture frames floating inside of uh, just beautifully illuminated interiors. A lot of people say, you know, do you have to project in only white backgrounds? No, portal projects in any color in the, in the world. So uh, athletes could beam in, uh, in, um, in team colors. Maybe my light is better over here. I should have just been standing here the whole time. Oh, we're, we're, we're over here. Yeah, pan back. Let's do like a side by side. Every work of art is available at the touch of a finger and uh, educators could beam from wherever they are to wherever they need to be in a school colors. And certainly the list goes on and on. Imagine the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame having the world's most famous uh, artists and having the world's most famous uh, instruments just floating uh, on access. This one is signed and autographed and, uh, and scanned. And here we are uh, looking at this thing that 
anyone can own uh, through the NFT process. It's pretty incredible. We have the sky's the limit. You know, I nearly named Portal uh, Canvas because it is a bit of a blank canvas. I, I'm, I'm inspired not just by Tim Draper and Molly, of course, but I'm inspired by the, the content creators for uh, like YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. I mean, these are the movie stars of today and tomorrow. And uh, they, I, I've been fortunate to sit down with some of them and they've said to me, uh, give us another, give us a blank canvas. We, this is how we make our living. This is how, uh, this is the future of film production and television. We want another place to create content. This isn't just four corners any longer. Now there's depth. You have an entire interior to create content out of. How am I doing on time, Molly? Do you want me to keep going? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, oh, I don't know. Are there any kids watching? But that's okay. Here, I'll, I'll move on. The fitness one. So I will, I don't know what the, is the volume on right now? Let's see if, have we turned volume up? Oh, volume's up. Hey, David. Uh, hey, Lizzie. How are those New Year's resolutions going? Um, terribly. <laughs> that's what I thought. Me too. Me too. But that's okay. I am here to get us back on track. I have a great full body workout planned. We're going to work our arms, our back, our core, our legs, our glutes. We're going to sweat. We're going to tone. Are you ready? Um, no, no. Yeah. All right. Fine. Yeah. Good. Okay. Get ready. Imagine having uh, the world's uh, most famous fitness instructors and educators and ins inspirational uh, speakers beam into your home. Uh, this is the Peloton of the future. This is the mirror of the future. What do you think of that? I'm, I'm feeling... Uh, I'm feeling like I just worked out already. Some yoga, stretching, right? Let's see, here's a really handsome fella coming up. Oh, David Nussbaum with Portal. Enough of you, we've seen you enough already. We can do, uh, you know what we can do? We can do some cool special effects as well. This is a guy named Billy Morris, and he plays guitar for uh, Dave Navarro, Ozzy Osbourne, Billy Idol. And he's going to perform for you for like a minute, and then we can take questions if you'd like. I don't know. I feel like I'm doing a podcast again. Hey, Billy, how's it going? So the difference between live and pre-recorded is with pre-recorded, you could create all these amazing transitions. You could create uh, really cool special effects, almost like filmmaking will allow you to do. Everybody now. Words. <laughs> this is great. All right. I mean, what else? What else can we do? Yeah. Is there some, am I missing something, Noah? I got questions. I've covered got answers. Oh, magazine covers. Okay, great. You're walking through a mall. You're seeing these standard, uh, uh, you know, flat digital displays saying "Eat at Joe's," whatever. Imagine walking into the mall and seeing hologram magazine covers. It really takes things to the next level. Apple on the cover of Wire. This young lady is striking her best pose on the cover of Vogue. It just takes things to the next level. There's no reason why this shouldn't be in every single mall, airport, terminal, and, um, and movie theater lobby. Three minutes. I don't know if it's coming across through Zoom and the phone, but 
Uh, I invite every single one of you to uh, reach out to Molly if you'd like uh, a personal uh, demonstration. We've got plenty of room here and, um, and Molly will run the demonstration for you personally. So, I have questions. Some questions. Okay. Yes, questions. Well, let's, Ryan, let's, get, let's do like a hologram thing again. All right. Okay. So when Tim was talking, and I imagine in a second when you're talking, look at you. You are literally reflecting on the floor in front of you. You look like in that portal. I'm stuck in the box. Okay. Is that a question? Be a be a mime? Yeah. All right. The question no, no, is no. You, you perform for us. Yes. You look Answer. real in the box. You look solid. Can't. Yes, I'm stuck in the box. This is, uh, I'm David Blaine. I'm stuck in the box. Not as good as what, uh, if, you, if you were watching earlier, Tim Draper did a great job. He, 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 he performed as if there was a fly stuck in the portal with him and, uh, and he was gonna turn into Brundlefly from the very famous movie, The Fly. Um, uh, yeah. The question is, how did I become such an extraordinary inventor did I go to inventor school? Uh, no, I did not go to inventor school. I, I am inspired by everything around me. Uh, I am inspired by, by my children. I'm inspired by my colleagues. Uh, I worked in the hologram industry for nearly a decade now. And two years ago, before I started Portal, I was running uh, a department of a hologram entertainment company. I mentioned this earlier. I just saw what was not working with that company and how I wanted it to scale uh, to become the next form of communication or the next form of travel. Uh, you know, Tim, uh, Mr. Draper was just on here a little while ago. He is our lead VC. He, uh, he led our seed round. And this is a guy who's a prolific investor, um, invested in Tesla and SpaceX. He invested in Twitch and Hotmail and Skype. And uh, I believe that he invested in Portal because we have something very similar. We're, we're, a, uh, we're the future of communications. We're the future of travel. And I just wanted to be able to uh, put my mark on, on the world. So that's, I did not go to inventor school. Although I went to radio school. I actually wanted to be a, uh, I wanted to be a disc jockey calling all the Yankee games uh, in New York, but that didn't, uh, that didn't pan out for me. So maybe we'll put some portals in Yankee Stadium, so at least I'll have some way of coming around full circle. Was that it? Two questions? Did I go to inventor school? And, yeah, have, and will you? Yes. Um, uh, uh, Robin, text me the question for Adrian. Robin, text. Molly, the questions from Adrian. Yeah. I can just, okay. I can do some more talk. David, it's Brandy. I have questions. Yeah. They, they haven't reached you yet? Um, okay. Uh, 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 I can talk about some of the questions I've been asked over the years. I can answer some things. So uh, uh, this portal, uh, the, the portal technology works in daylight. Uh, it's the only hologram technology in the world that uh, works in all lighting conditions. Yes, we have, a question. we have a question. How heavy is this, is this portable? This is a great question. Uh, who is this coming from? Do we have a, a, a name? Eugene has the question, how heavy is it and how portable is it? Eugene, uh, the portals themselves uh, weigh around 400 pounds. Uh, when they are inside of one of the, our travel roadie cases, you can double that because the roadie cases are, are built to withstand a lot of damage uh, as well. Uh, are they portable? Yes. Uh, portal is a, uh, is a completely self-contained hollow portation machine. Every single thing that you see here, the camera that's above my head, the, uh, the speakers to the left and right of, of my mouth, and, uh, and all of the bits, everything that's making this thing run, everything is embedded in it. 
So uh, you plug it into the wall, everything turns on. There's no external projectors, there's no external cameras. Uh, really, once it comes out of its roadie case, you plug it into the wall, everything turns on and they're built on wheels, which makes things easy to move on the ground. So yes, portable. What is the energy consumption and uh, can we make this a mobile setup or, or does it have to be in a studio or can it be a mobile setup? Uh, energy consumption is I believe 12 amps. Thumbs up from Noah Rothstein, director of operations for uh, 12 amps, which, and, it, and it's not by mistake, um, 15 amps, if you plugged into your uh, living room wall socket, for example, uh, 20 amps is basically how all uh, office buildings these days are made. So again, you could plug it into any single outlet and you're not going to trip uh, the, uh, the electricity. The mobile setup is awesome. So uh, yes, everything comes in pieces uh, and uh, everything goes into a, a roadie case on wheels as well. So we have uh, gone to uh, a, a Noah, as a, as a matter of fact, was just in Miami doing a uh, uh, doing an activation for a performance, and the the, the talent was being beamed out of uh, like commercial trailers in the parking lot. So you don't have to go to a studio. We can build our studio anywhere in the world. Uh, think um, you know from your from your office or from your living room. You should be able to beam from wherever you are to wherever you need to be. Yes. Eugene, come in with multiple questions. Thank you, Eugene. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, the question is, can the person who's being beamed in see the audience that he or she's being beamed in front of? Yes. The, again, the camera that's above my head, not really here, but, but in, the, in the portal, uh, can see the audience that I'm being beamed in front of. So if I'm being beamed into one place, it's super easy. I can just start picking people out in the crowd but I can also be beamed into multiple locations. And how do I see them on a return feed, right? So I'm seeing the audience on a camera that's embedded in, that signal's being sent back to me on a giant monitor uh, in my field of vision, right? So I can see myself, right? I've got this, this confidence monitor. I know where I'm standing. Uh, I can, um, when I look into the, the lens, I'm looking into my audience's eyes. And then just beside the lens, I see, uh, I see the audience that I'm being beamed in front of. Final question, David, and we'll take part one. What is the pricing for the full-size YouTube cloud Okay. Right. Question is about pricing. Uh, how much does everything cost? And is that also from Eugene? <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, it did, didn't sound like a Eugene question to me, so. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, pricing, you know, I'm always a little hesitant to discuss pricing. Uh, one of the reasons, well, you could probably just Google it and you'll get your answer, but uh, we've got distributors around the world and based on different levels of, of participation, also as we scale, uh, you know, one portal is gonna be more expensive than if you bought 50 portals, right? So uh, what I will say though is um, you could contact Molly at portal hologram, P-O-R-T-L hologram.com and ask her these questions and she will uh, be more forthcoming. The, Tim Draper said to me, if somebody asks you a question and you don't give them the answer, they're going to attack you. But I'm gonna go ahead and not give you the answer uh, because I want you all contacting Molly uh, to, right? Didn't I, I this is, it's called a, uh, what, what is this called? What, what did I just do? I'm paying it forward. Yeah. But yes, okay. it's less than a million dollars. Yeah. David, thank you. People are saying this is the coolest thing thank you. ever. People are saying it's the coolest thank thing. You. I appreciate it. Thank you for, uh, for joining me. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Wow. We are. We've, we've, we've seen it now. Is that not the coolest thing you have ever seen? Are we all believers that the future is here? The future is okay. here? <laughs> was it just me? Or when you saw him in the box, when I first saw Tim in the box, I was like, Tim is in the box and he's reflecting on the floor in front of him. Like 
he's a solid object. That is like mind blowing. The whole thing about holograms is they don't have shadows. These holograms have shadows. It's like you really are teleporting. I'm literally, my mind is blowing. This is a, a power. This is powerful for us as a collective. There are. I have more questions for him. So I guess we're gonna have to have a clubhouse with David on the clubhouse. Do, could we schedule that? Let's get on that. Let's make sure that Molly knows that. So some of my questions and maybe for the audience questions are. How does he see the NFT functioning within this hologram, right? So what does that look like? I'd love to hear more, get even more drilled into how that would work from his perspective. I, I'd like to see an NFT for membership and have these portal studios literally like everywhere and have live event spaces where the, the performer and, and can it get bigger? Could you have a whole band in there is my, is my other question. Or do you have to have each band member in a separate little portal? But like, I could totally see venues, right? Where they're in, they're all over the world and the band performs once and they've got this huge audience. Mm -hmm. And then, and then at home, can I have a portal viewer on my television? Right? Because it looked 3D. I'm on my laptop. I'm looking at a 2D screen. But when I'm looking at it, it totally presents like you look flat. You know, I you look a little flat to me, like a regular when you're doing video conferencing, right? But in the box, it totally looked 3D without 3D 